Hey everybody, Christopher Rod here, and welcome to a game called Into the Breach. This is made by the developers of FTL, uh, a game that a lot of you are probably really familiar with, and you've probably even mastered the game by this point, it's been out for so long. Into the Breach is... you, you can see some influences from FTL, but it's very different. I've put about five hours into this, and I am, like, addicted. I almost played five hours in one sitting. It's really good. The definition of just one more turn, just one more turn, is so present that I, I, could, I, do, I do not want to stop playing it. I do not want to stop playing it. So I'm pretty excited to show it to you guys. Really quick summary of what it's about. Uh, we basically control these mechs on these randomly generated battlefields, and uh, we have to save the world from these alien threats. It's a, it's a turn-based strategy but you can see the enemy's moves before they're about to happen, and then you can react to those moves. Um, it sound I don't know, I'm just gonna show you because it's really different. And I think it's- I think it's really special, to be honest with you. Um, so the only thing I'm gonna let you know, options-wise, that I've changed, I've increased the scaling so that everybody can see it. Um, a little clearer, some of the, uh, fonts and stuff are a little bit bigger. Uh, so you can change that stuff on your own playthrough, but... This is Into the Breach. Thanks so much to, uh, Subset Games for sending me an early copy, because... I'm gonna put so much time into it. It's so good. Let's get going. Humanity destroyed, Vec threat, unstoppable, mission failed. It's time to go back and try again. Now... This is a, a bit of an illusion to what happens if you actually lose a campaign or you lose a run. You know how in FTL, um, it takes you a lot of consecutive runs to actually get to the end and to finish that game. Uh, this, I think, will be similar in a certain aspect. If you do end up losing your campaign, you can choose one of your pilots to go back and start again. You're starting from scratch, but you at least have that pilot. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I need to show you right off the bat here. Um, this is our current time traveler. As far as I can tell, we always start with the same guy. Uh, he's got the same special ability. He needs two, or he gets two bonus XP per kill. This is great because he's going to level up faster and then unlock additional skills. You can choose the mech that he starts in. There is the combat mech, the um, cannon mech, and the artillery mech. These three different ones over here. I like to put him in the combat mech because it's the one that does the most damage and we can level him up a little bit quicker. Now we can rename our pilots, we can rename our mechs, we can do all of that stuff which is great. If you guys have suggestions for names for our, our time traveler or pilots and our mechs, hit me up and I will definitely include them. Now. Um, over here, there's ways to rename, there's different colors you can select, etc, etc. But the whole thing is that you need to play with certain mechs to unlock others. So if we want to change our squad, we can only start with the Rift, Walker, Rift Walkers. If we want to change over to um, these subsequent groups, you need to pay these coins. And these coins you get by doing achievements. Now, it's not achievements in the typical, like, you know, you get 10 gamer score or anything like that. It is achievements that you have to do with these Rift Walkers to earn the coins that you can use to unlock future. So here are the three achievements that we need to do. Uh, Watery Grave is number one. You need to drown three enemies in water in a single battle. Uh, kill an enemy five or more tiles away with a dash punch, which is an upgrade actually that we don't have access to right away. And then the last one is complete the first corporate island. So if we can at least beat one island, then we'll get one coin. But as you can see, we need at least two coins to unlock the next group. Um, and that's where things get really interesting. Once you start unlocking uh, more of the different mechs, the whole game just changes dramatically. So every time you play it, not only is every level different, but if you take out a different group of mechs, it plays differently too. And then you have your pilots with your own abilities, and they can go into each of the different mechs, and you can see how that gets pretty complex. Um, the other unlocks include things like these colors, as I mentioned, and uh, these come along with unlocking the different squads that I just showed you. So you can see the actual names here, and you get like a bit of a hint as to how that squad might operate. Uh, time Travelers, you unlock these as you're playing the game. You will find um, certain like capsules that you have to protect and defend, and then you might find a pilot inside. So pretty cool. Like I love the sense of progression. 
And, uh, yeah, it's- it's straight up- it's addicting. It- it really- it really is addicting. So, um, the only thing I haven't touched on are these victory medals. You get these victory medals, um, by completing the islands, which I'm about to show you. Now, it's gonna ask if we want to do a tutorial at some point. I'm gonna say no, but it will still prompt us for, uh, the things that we need to learn as we go. And I will follow through with those to show you guys and demonstrate how it all works. Let's go. We'll hold this timeline, no matter what. That's right, Ralph. Yes, we will. Okay. So, uh, we only have access to one island, as you can see. Complete the first island to get here, complete this island to get here, etc, etc. And, uh, that's the running theme throughout the entire game, is like you start with nothing, and as you progress, you unlock bigger and better things, but enemies get tougher and tougher as well. So, uh, let's go here to the Archive, Inc. The Museum Island recreates old Earth as it was before the oceans rose and nearly wiped out humanity. This tells you who the CEO is. Uh, the threat scanner shows the, the enemy types, and then it shows you your environment. And this is important later because of the different mechs that you unlock. Um, they're stronger in certain environments than others, so you don't always want to take out the same group to the same environment, if that makes sense. So let's go. Bad news is Vecker overrunning our island, putting refugees and historical artifacts at risk. The good news is we have Old Earth military artifacts that can help in the fight. So, uh, this is a simulation available if we wanted, uh, but I'm going to decline and I will show you... Um, all the tips will still pop up so I can show you everything. So this is our power grid. If I had to compare this to something like XCOM, this is like reverse avatar progress. So, as this goes down, if this goes to zero, you lose. That's just straight up. And this will continue, this, this persists between missions. So if you ever get an opportunity to increase your power grid, it's pretty helpful. Uh, each mission has three possible rewards. Uh, there's power cores, there's grid power, and there's corporate reputation. Power cores used to upgrade your mechs. Grid power is so that you don't lose the game, because that's important. And corporate reputation are these stars that you earn to unlock, um, uh, to buy items when you finish the entire island. And that lets you buy different weapon upgrades, um, you can buy additional cores, you can buy power at that point. Very similar to FTL in, in, in that sense. Um, so probably not new to a lot of you guys. Now, uh, we can look at our individual mechs if we want to, but we're going to learn a little bit about these as we get out there. Um, the upgrade system and the cores work very similar to FTL, where you have to install, uh, like a, uh, a reactor core, and then you can see, like, this takes up one reactor core. If we wanted to do this dash, remember that one of our challenges was to do the dash punch and kill somebody? Well, we would need two power cores in order to enable this. And, uh, even if we have that, we would still need something for our weapon. So as you can imagine, might be difficult to do on our very first attempt. Uh, it also shows any level that they have right now. So if you go here, you'll notice we don't have anything unlocked um, for Ori Waller, Nicolo Romano. But Ralph has experience where he's getting that, that extra perk, if you can think of it that way. There's also uh, health or movement that you can uh, put cores into that modify your mech accordingly. So it's pretty cool. Okay. So right off the bat, we have two choices. Now, if we go south, since it's not connected to anything else, it won't open up access to any of these areas. It's nice because there's power there, and we could do this if our power starts to drop. It might be good to try and go there and protect that power generator. Um, but I think we're gonna go here. Now, there's bonus objectives on every mission. Uh, on this one, we can destroy the dam, and we have to try and take less than four mech damage. So this is the little mission grid, and uh, this is, it's really cool how it actually loads in here, because this is the actual mission grid that we're going to be on, and then you'll see it just takes us right in. It's awesome. I, I don't know. It's so satisfying. Okay. There's a lot going on here. Um, these are the three enemies that we're facing right now. We have uh, two scorpions, and if you hover over these, you can see, okay, this guy, he can move three spaces. He's got invigorating spores, so um, this is actually a passive coming from this scion here. All this guy does is he just gives plus one HP to every other alien on the map. As you can imagine, probably want to get rid of him pretty quickly. Uh, 
it shows a little graphic in the middle here of what their damage is. So they're going to walk up to you. They're going to want to web the target, which makes you stationary. You can't move. You can still attack, but you cannot move. And then it will do damage on the following turn. So uh, we have our three mechs that we saw at the beginning, and we can deploy these. Now, strategically, you do have to be careful with where you're placing these guys. This guy is a melee unit, so you want to keep him closer. This guy can shoot at a distance, so you want to keep him in a position that has some, um, some mobility and a lot of range. So, like, even on this middle tile, we have access to shoot all the way down this direction. And then this guy, this artillery unit's really cool. Um, I'll show you how it works in a second. All right. Hundreds of people in those buildings. Make sure they stay standing. Okay. So these guys are all going to move. These are emerging enemies. So on the next turn, we're going to have more enemies come from here. Now, we can block these from spawning, but it will damage the unit above. The interesting thing about that is we can somehow... Uh, move the enemy units to be on there and they'll take additional damage and block a spawn. So that's like perfect if we can make that happen. All right. Now, the key to winning any mission is to get to, just to get to the end. You just have to survive. The goal is not always to clear out every alien. You just need to make it four turns. The challenge is, and some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. The challenge is, uh, you see all these little um, buildings here? These basically basically represent your power. So if the aliens damage this, it knocks off one in your power grid. And remember, this this power grid lasts. You got to go across the whole island and across all of the islands, all four of the islands, without running out of power. That's very difficult. So those are like the top priority. Uh, this is just showing that this guy is providing that passive bonus. Um, there's ways that we can show this too. If you hold control, it'll show the, um, the overlay. Okay, so... They've done a couple of moves here. Not a big deal. We can handle this pretty easily. Um, we have the bonus objectives, remember, though. We have to destroy this dam, which has two hit points. And you can see here, if we, um, if we want, we can see what's happening with the status of any unit by hovering over these icons. So he's webbed, which means he can't move, but he can still attack. All of our mechs are massive, which means they can walk in water, but they can't shoot in water. And the interesting thing about this dam is if we take the dam out, all of the tiles in front of the dam turn to water. And any enemies that are ground-based are going to fall and die in the water. It gets really complex. I hope I haven't lost you too, too much so far. Um, okay, so we need to destroy the dam. But I think our top priority should be trying to take out this guy here. And since none of them are attacking these buildings right now, we have the opportunity to do that. So with our mech, you can see he just shoots in a straight line and he does one damage and knocks the target back. Now, if you knock targets into each other, they take additional damage, but this is all about like displacing your enemies in the way that you would want, okay? So what I'm gonna do is let's shoot the um, Scion. So he's down to one. And then with the artillery mech, he can shoot um, he has to skip one tile, but then any tile in front or to the sides or behind him, he can shoot. And let me actually just show you the animation. So, what this does is it'll do damage to the tile that it lands on, and then it will push the tiles adjacent to it outwards, okay? So what I'm going to do in this scenario is we're going to do the one damage to this guy and it's going to push this guy out and it's going to... and there's nothing else around him so that's fine. But it'll kill him off, which means that they'll all have less HP and this guy will get shuffled over to the right. We get some, some XP for like the kill. And then here, uh, basically our Titan Fist is just a melee punch. We punch them, we do two damage however, which is really good, uh, and we move them back one tile. So, this guy's a melee unit. If we push him off of us, you can see we break the web, and on the next turn, he's going to actually attack this empty square, which is perfect for us. That means we're not taking any damage, none of our buildings are getting destroyed, and uh, we're pretty well okay. The one thing I want to show you before we end this turn is this attack order. This is really important uh, once we start manipulating the enemies a bit more. So, on any given turn on this map, 
Uh, fire damage will happen first, and I'll talk about fire damage in a second when it probably will happen. Uh, then the enemies take their actions, and you can see which enemy is going to act in which order. So this guy's going to go first. You can also hold alt to bring this up. This guy's going to go first. This guy's going to go second. And then the last thing is that enemies are going to emerge. So then these guys are going to come out. So the cool thing is, like, you know exactly how the enemies are going to act, and it's up to you to decide how you displace them and or kill them and or damage them. Uh, in order to handle it accordingly. Now, it's really nice to be able to block this because then less enemies come up. You do take damage, but your mechs repair in between each mission. So, uh, for this one, we're just going to end. See how he attacks the empty square? Nothing happens. Alright. So, they're threatening this power. He's threatening this mech again. Now, these guys... These guys are pretty... These guys are tough to deal with. And they're tough to deal with for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, their range, they go all the way across the map for their attack. Uh, and they've got 3 HP. Okay? So, if we can get them near water and knock them in, great. But they're pretty safe where they are. Uh, so a couple of things we could do. We could tank a shot. If we hover on this, you'll see what they do. They shoot, they deal one damage, but they don't move you. So, you know, it deals one damage, but again, you're you're in a mech. You, you're going to have to take damage. Now, a couple of ways that we could look at doing this here. Um, the challenge is that this guy is really hard to get to. I'm thinking that we could probably displace him fairly well. Um, we could move over here. We could take the artillery shot, which again... Um, pushes out the units around the one that you hit. So I could shoot it here. It's not going to do damage to anything. But it will push this guy over to the left, and then his shot will miss that, that power generator. The other cool thing you can do is um, you can undo your move before you actually commit to a, a real action, like firing your weapon. And once per mission, you can go back to the start of any turn. So if you made a few moves and you're like, ah, this isn't working out, uh, you can reset that term, but you can only do this once per mission or battle, as it says. So, what I want to try to figure out is... How can I get this guy off of him so that I could free him up? There's a couple of things we could do. I could take the shot at him. I could move down here. Take the shot so he does one damage. Um, and it's actually going to bump into this guy. Because this, remember... This guy's attack pushes enemies back, and as I mentioned earlier, if they bump into each other, they do an additional uh, unit of damage. So he would actually end up taking two damage. Now, I wouldn't be able to displace this guy, but I could tank the shot with this cannon mech. And I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to move him down. Um, you just have to select the weapon or press 1 and take this. You see how he's going to take two damage, one from our shot, and one from bumping into the other unit. The other unit's going to take one damage from getting bumped into. So that frees up this building, which is great. And now I can also, because I can't really do anything else with him, I might as well just punch this guy to kill him. This guy's going to tank a shot, and I think we're going to go over here and try and displace this unit so he shoots down by the left here. Uh, this is just explaining that when you push into the objects, they do additional damage to each. Okay? Now remember, we do have a secondary objective where we need to destroy this dam. And the sooner we can do that, the better. Depending on what happens, it might be a good idea to do it next turn. And we... It's possible. These guys won't web. They're just going to start... They're going to aim somewhere and shoot, so... Okay, so we take that damage. Your mechs will automatically repair after the battle. If a mech is reduced to zero health, pilot dies and the mech is disabled for the rest of that battle. But the pilot within is gone. The mech can come back, but then you need to put another pilot in there. So, more on that. And this is a whiff. So you can probably start to see already how this can get pretty complex. Okay. Okay, now, let's take a look at this for a second. Number one, um, we see that this guy's shooting down this way. If we move him out of the way, he'll shoot the dam, which is 
actually really good for us. Um, but we have two, potentially three buildings at stake here. If we move this combat mech and, uh, and we open up this path without killing this one, this one goes down. This one's being targeted. This one is targeting over here, and this guy's targeting here. So, a couple of things we could do. What I'm thinking, and this is kind of how, like, I, I gotta work it through in my mind every time, every turn. You gotta work it through and figure out what's gonna be best for your three mechs. So I'm thinking we could do something like this. We put the artillery mech uh, shot on this section. That's gonna push this guy out, he'll miss again. This guy will go into the, um, to the water, and he will die. Okay? Um, this guy, we could bring to the left, and we could shoot this guy up. He'll move this guy forward, this, um, this Hornet. But the Hornet would then be attacking, um, our artillery unit. So that might not be wise, but attacking the artillery unit is better than attacking the power. Okay? Then what we could do is we could bring down this mech, and we could, um, we could punch him into the forest. We'll, we, and we'll have to tank some damage as well. But I think that's probably best. That protects all of our power, and early on that power is so important. Um, I think that we'll, we'll do this. So he goes into the water, we bring, yeah, it kills it instantly. Now remember, one of our challenges is to put three enemies into water in one battle. It's tough to do, especially on a map like this, but... The other option we have here is... We could... We could... Um, take a shot at this thing. Actually, we don't even need to do that. We can do... We can open the dam and... Okay, that's what we're gonna do. I got it. We're gonna move this guy down. We're gonna shoot north. We're gonna take one damage on the artillery next turn. That's fine. It's not the end of the world, okay? We're gonna bring the combat mech down here. He's gonna hit the dam. It's gonna break it. Um, we're gonna be in water, but that's okay. It's gonna kill both of these guys, which is huge. We can probably deal with this guy next turn. He's only got one health. And then these guys are gonna be trapped on the other side of the water. And depending on what they are, that's good or bad. But we'll destroy the dam. We also want to try and take less than four mech damage. So we're going to take another one here. We've already taken one here. Um, we can do repairs, but we'll talk about that in a second. So we're going to attack here. Boom. <laughs> Got yourself a new river. All right, watery grave. Done. Oh, and actually, we just did the achievement. We just did the achievement. Because we knocked somebody in earlier, and those guys we just drowned in water. That's actually huge. Because now, even if we just if we just beat this island, then we've unlocked uh, two of the coins to unlock a new squad. So that's awesome. That's really, really good. Mechs cannot use their weapons when standing in water. Fine. This guy's going to tank some damage. That's okay. End the turn. Taking heavy damage, Commander, but I'm still in the fight. Good, good, good. Ori, good job. Now these guys... These guys can fly over water, if they want. Um, you can't knock them into the water, that's not gonna do anything. But we're actually, we're in a, we're in a really good spot. We just have to survive this turn, and we don't even, if we don't take any more damage, we're gonna complete all the bonus objectives as well, alright? So, a couple of things we could do. Since we do two damage, um, I can move out, kill this guy. I can move out and kill this guy, and then I can move our artillery mech down here, Hit this tile on the back, shoving this guy in, and I think that's how we do it. And again, this is a this is a tile that's going to block movement. So if this guy had three health, for example, we could attack him, and he would he would take the two plus the additional from ramming into the mountain. But he only got two health, so this is fine. All right, now we're going to move our artillery mech down. And we're gonna do the one that pushes forward. He's gonna push him into the water. That went actually really well. That went really well. Um, I've done a lot of these damn missions that do not go this well. And that was good. We didn't take, we took less damage. And the turn, we're happy. So, uh, 
every mission is like this, but every mission is randomly generated. They have random objectives, they have random uh, rewards, etc., etc. So, uh, you can see the XP that we've gained. Now, this guy, really close. He gained 19 XP. He got a lot of kills, obviously. Um, but this was... This is great, because once he hits that next level, a um, couple of different things can happen, so we'll leave it at that. The one thing I wanted to mention that I haven't talked about yet is this grid defense percent. Uh, what this does is it's, it's a chance for any building to resist damage. And so what that means is if something is attacking a building 15% of the time, it will get blocked. It's pretty much never, let's be honest, but when it happens, it's like the best feeling. Uh, so we saved a thousand civilians, got some experience, we got two stars, which is great because at the end of the island, we can use those for upgrades, etc, etc. And that unlocks these two things. So corporate reputation, as I said, uh, you can spend these on supplies at the end of the island. Now, do we want to go into Colonial Park? I don't know that we need to. We don't need to generate more power right now. I think if we go to Ohm Town, we can end the battle with less than four mech damage and protect the old earth bar. Right there, that's an objective I've never seen before. So I don't know what that is, but there are tidal waves. This is really cool, so um, let's let's show you how this works. Offshore volcanoes ca causing tidal waves along the coast and may help wash away the Vec threatening the area. So tidal waves, I'll just show you. It's, oh, it's so cool. I love it. I'm like hooked. All right, so as you can see, you see, um, Right here, Mark Tiles return to water at the start of the enemy turn. This mission has a very has a special effect that will happen every turn. Mouse over the environment icon to get more info. So what this means is all of these tiles on the right, these are all going to be turned into water. If you can get an enemy to be standing on there at the end of the turn, they're going to die. Unless they're floating. So these two, not going to matter. This guy, yeah, that's great. Right? Um, okay, so let's start a little bit away from there. This is the old earth bar. So if they make an attempt to protect or to attack that, we want to protect that as a bonus objective. And then these are the power things. So we kind of want to get into position to defend these as well. Uh, these guys have three movement, as you can see when you hover over. They're getting the extra health from this guy. Um, so if I go here, he's unable to attack. And more than likely, we can kind of predict where he's going to go. Because if he goes one, two, three, web, or one, two, three, web, more than likely, that's what he's going to do. But if I'm standing here, he might target me instead. So I'm going to go here, thinking that if he ends up going to this side, we can move him down three and then shoot to the left, right? That's the idea. Um, in the artillery mech, I like to put these guys where they have a lot of space, like a lot of... Um, you know, if they have access to, like, a whole row or something, it's very helpful. But it's kind of tight in this area, so I'm not 100% sure what's best. But I'm going to go here. Um, this will give us access to all of these areas if we need. One, two, three. I won't be able to move to this side. But uh, since we have all the enemies on this, er on this area, I'm thinking that that's probably okay. Attack order. So it's going to go environment, and then he's going to go, he's going to go, he's going to go. This first one's not super important, but... I like all the little voices, too, from the cities. It's so cool. Okay. Okay, this is cool. This is cool. So this guy kind of went as we predicted, right? Um, yeah, this is going to work. This is going to work okay. So what we can do... Actually, we could do we could do this one of two ways. One of the things we could do is if we move this guy back here, we could take his artillery weapon and blast these two. It will split him over here, then we could come down and punch. Problem with that is it's gonna push this guy this way and do damage. So let's undo that move. Let's do um I think if we just punch this guy, he's gonna take the two damage, plus he's gonna take damage from standing up here. And I don't think I can kill this, this, um, Scion just yet, but that would be nice so that they all have less health. He's going to take the extra damage when this guy pops. These two will pop. This guy, I think we'll just push him back. Almost wonder if I should move back and do it so that he can't reach me. 
and then he'd be more likely to target those buildings again. But if that happens, then I can't move up to to do the pathing here. So I think we can we can deal with this guy, hopefully. Let's just knock him down. And then we can do an additional damage if we want. Actually, yeah, we're going to do an additional damage here. Yeah, we're going to do that. And then the the push up will actually kill him. It's going to knock this guy over, but he's just... He doesn't actually do anything. He, he'll just float there. All right. I think that's all right. Okay. Now, I imagine the tidal waves just continue along the same path all the time. I don't know, but we're about to find out. So that killed him. Okay. Okay. That's good. If they would have webbed this guy, that would have been very, very troubling. Um, okay. Let's think about this. So now what we could do, I could come down this way, and we can knock this guy out so we save this building and we block. Which is really nice. Um, if I just stand here, then... They turn to water at the start of the turn, but it's not going to kill us. It just turns to water, and we can deal with water, we just can't attack from it. So, let's do... Let's, let's think about this. Because one of the things we could consider... We could consider... Let's say if we brought this guy down and push this guy over, fine. We come down here. Uh, sorry. We would... Ah, uh, no, you know what? That's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. This guy... We have two people attacking this building. We need to get this guy off, which we could do with a punch. But then he's gonna be attacking here, so I probably would have to move here first. So we do this, we take this shot, we move him out. This mech punches here, right? I don't want to come down and punch because then it, built, it destroys that thing. Um, but then, then we're in a bit of a tricky situation because if I move back here as an example, I can only shoot this tile and push out the ones around it. So I think we might be in a situation. Actually, no, I have an idea. I think I know what we can do. I think I know what we can do. Okay. So these movements that, that you see me undo, these are just um, the first phase of any move. And you can freely undo these to kind of position things how you want. Uh, the second part, you can't you can't reset. So once you execute an action, you're, you're set in stone. What I'm trying to figure out is, can I move this mech to a position where I can knock somebody out of the way? Not really. I can kill this guy, but then I might need to damage my own mech in order to position to move this guy over with the artillery unit. But it would save all of the power, and I think that we're going to do that. So let's knock this out of the way. I move you back here so that you don't take the bump from this one. You kill this guy. You're leveled up. Beautiful. So what did you get? Now... So his skill that he just got, and these are random as well, as far as I can tell. Uh, the skill that he got is an additional move. So now instead of moving three, he moves four, as you can see uh, right here. So his move, that little green icon, is four. So I think we do one damage to our mech. And we push this guy over, so we save this power. Now, I'm, st I'm wondering, are the units getting destroyed? I frick, I feel like they might. Okay, no, good. Whew. Okay, good. Beautiful. Now, uh, remember I said we were going to talk about burning forests. So he attacked this tile that had trees on it, and that turns it into fire. If we can get an enemy unit into fire, it ignites and it takes a d single damage every turn. We're going to block this guy. This guy's out here, but, like, 
not important. Okay. Okay. Now, how do we solve this problem? We're netted by the guy above. So as long as we just push him up, we're fine, I think. We might... Hmm. Because he's blocking that emerging point, and if he takes damage from this guy, that's actually problematic to us. How much health does this guy have? Two? If we could kill this guy, that would be huge, but I don't think I can make that happen. I don't want to punch him into our guy either. Because, A, not only will it not kill him, but, yeah, th this, is, this is a problem. For sure it's a problem. How do we break that? It's very tough. I can't attack him in the water. I can't really slide this guy over either. It's part of the part of the issue. Because if I did that, I'd have to damage this building. And the building's not being attacked, but I also don't want to lose one of our mechs. So let's see. Um Ori. If I put you here, let me just visualize what I could get done. I could do the one damage to our to our um, tank again. We only need to survive this last turn, actually. So once they execute their moves, we're safe. So you know what? I think we're doing this. I think we're. I think this will work. Okay, so that frees up his web. Actually, the emerge won't even happen because we are um, finishing the turn. And then you can come in here. And this tile's getting attacked, this tile's getting attacked. We saved all of the buildings. That's awesome. See, this is what I love about it. Oh man, I don't know about you guys, but like every, it's like a puzzle every single turn. And it's so, it's so addicting. It's so addi it's just so addicting. I don't know. I hope I've done it justice for you guys because I'm, it's really, really good. So we, we're going to hit both objectives here. This is safe. This is going to go down. These guys aren't going to hit anything. We could even, uh, if you, if you don't have anything to do at the end of a turn, you can repair. I might as well, it doesn't matter, but just to show you how it works. We can do the repair. That uses up his turn. We could do the repair here. And you can see that this changes as well, because it's not just about taking damage, but if you repair some of the damage you took, then it reduces the overall damage that you took for objective purposes. So, we're good. We're great! Done. Oh! That's so good. That's just such a great start. I'm really happy that it's gone this well. Whew! Okay. So we're already in quite a few stars, which is really nice. Uh, we've maintained our power, which is really good. Um, it says, gain power when your power grid is full to upgrade its defense. So base defense is 15. Overpower bonus is... What is this? Uh, currently it's 0, but it would go to 25 if we fill it. Is that what that does? That, I'm not 100%. I've never been to 100% power. So we'll see. Uh, but we did get a nice promotion, and... We secured the region. Now he's got four moves, which makes him way more mobile. So super helpful. But we want to keep him away from the webs so that we can use that mobility. It's, it's tough. It's very tough. All right. So now we've got access to Old Town, Old Earth Park. Um, we could go in here to get power if we wanted to. Uh, this might be a decent one, actually. There's only one objective, and it's protect the coal plants. Or the coal plant. Uh, defensive shields active is actually a bonus to us. It means certain buildings have a defensive shield and they'll absorb one shot. So that's really helpful. Plus we have air support and I kind of like the environment stuff because we can knock enemies into it and do a ton of damage. It destroys anything that's sitting on that tile. We'll probably go to preserve farms, but I think I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I'm going to be doing uh, a series of this for YouTube. I'm going to probably stream it as well, but I'll do a completely separate profile for that. One of the cool things is that you can have three profiles running on this game at any time, and they're all completely isolated. All of your unlocks, all of your upgrades, all of your progression, completely isolated. Um, 
This is... I, I'm so addicted, it's not even funny. I love this game so much. And uh, there's times where I wipe the squad, I'm like, oh, I, you know, you learn from it every time. But uh, I hope I hope it did it justice. Those first two missions went very well, but a couple of tricky situations we had to get out of. And with that dam, it actually surprised me that we got the uh, the coin because, you know, you're, there's so many things you got to think about. Uh, your overarching priorities shift, and you get kind of um, you get lost sometimes. It's very tough to follow everything you need to do. But yeah, anyways, I highly recommend that you guys check this game out. Uh, it's releasing on uh, February 27th, so tomorrow, uh, from when you see this video. And uh, I'll probably be streaming it today at some point, and then probably a couple times this week, because it is really addicting. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, check it out. It's called Into the Breach by the guys who made FTL. Thanks again to Subset Games for the uh, early copy. And if you guys are new to the channel, if you uh, like what you saw, consider subscribing. That would be great. Love to see you guys again. And uh, since it's the first video in a series, if you guys could drop a like, that helps me a lot. I know I'm totally selling out there, but uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one, okay? Wish me luck. Bye.